Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion. And of course, a whole lot of pins about Brandon's works. And the Cosmere. Okay, Evgeny. Uh, uh, I'm Eric, and joining me is Ian, who's a normal person. <laughs> Unlike the person who's going to be after you. Um, hi, I'm Weird Writer. I fully missed Eric saying my name there because he was so distracted. <laughs> cool. I won't. I won't cut any of that. That's that's like, great. Like that's a comedy goal. Person would. Yes. Yes. Uh, also joining me, uh, having some sort of medical issue, presumably, <laughs> uh, is of Kenny. Uh, 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 hi. I'm urgent. God. I am. I am moving in my chair. Stop making, stop making the microphone clip, man. <laughs> it's it's de okay. designed for your normal talking voice. I have multiple normal talking voices. Well, uh, also joining us is Shannon. Hi. Hi. I didn't even notice uh, Evgeny dancing. I like it, I just like blended in into his normal persona. I noticed you like being confused more than I noticed. Good. Good. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm Greg. Hi. And last but definitely not least, we have Jesse. Hello. Uh, I also saw Argent dancing, but then like immediately got distracted when my brain was trying to figure out where else I had seen this from. So stopped caring about all of right. it yeah i have it in my head like what what that's properly supposed to look like but i don't know where that comes from yeah like mm -hmm. i definitely have seen a clip of something for some reason i think it's like a shark or a dolphin or something that does that what? i don't know <laughs> see no <laughs> no where no, my cool. brain went it's a was thing. like was like the uh, dragon God. puppets like from like Chinese New Year of like, oh, how, like okay. Zoda. so cool sure yeah sure. this okay. is so cool and yeah. anyway, it's for the dragon reference <laughs> yeah yeah that was a dragon reference actually as a <laughs> foreshadowing for this episode oh okay thank you. Yeah. so for those of you who are still watching yeah. this show welcome <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you yeah. are anyway I'm Eric Mm -hmm. oh, I haven't yes. introduced myself yet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm Lady Lameness. <laughs> uh, great, and I'm <laughs> Chaos. Uh, Ian's doing great. We're doing great. We are recording this one after another from our past WAB episode. Uh, so we're you, crazy. And we're already tired. You know what I can say? <laughs> It, which I screwed up several times last episode is now I can say that the title of Secret Project 4 is Sunlit Man and I don't have to worry about it anymore for the second episode because this is coming out after October or from 1st. Now on, from now on, I'm airs. never doing this again. It's, it's not relevant for this episode because we don't talk about Sunlit Man in our interview at all. Yeah, well, yeah, and yeah, so we don't, we don't have Sunlit Man spoilers for this, but I'm just excited I can say the title and not need to... <laughs> you don't have to bleep it anymore. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, so, um, yeah. we, do, we do have spoilers for everything else, though. Everything else. Everything Except else. the Stormlight 5 readings that are currently available. That's right. And so let's get right on into more very exciting stuff. And so we're going to get some Tress stuff. And I believe Jess is next up, right? Yes. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yes. So the next question is from Argent, uh, and he asks um, about a lot of parallels in things and how there is one between white sand and sand mastery and some Aether stuff. I noticed that there are parallels, the water requirement, there's a bond. The Omnibus really stresses that the Sand Mastery is forging a bond there. There's a legendary 13th Aether Spore, which may be white, may be black. That's a little weird. What's going on here? Has autonomy corrupted an Aether? Brandon says, Raffo, you are theorizing along the correct lines, Argent. Well done. Which, which is funny because this <laughs> wasn't an Argent created question. It was created by Rosemary. Uh, and so Brandon's <laughs> like, ah, oh, yeah. yes. Well done, uh, Argent in particular. Yeah. I, I, I did have a similar. Oh, I wasn't in one mode, but now we are. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I did come up with something similar during Inking Out Loud. So. Okay. Uh, perfect. Call it a collab. Um, yeah. So, like, Press introduces us to the idea of Luhel bonds. Yes. It's like 
seems to be what's going on with sand mastery as well yep mm -hmm. and there, there are these like bone spores right yeah Which allegedly might be white sand might Maybe. be skull moss might not be a thing might not might not even exist true yep, yep. yeah i i like the idea that it's white sand and that people on lumar would think of it as a spore I think that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah. If, they, if they like saw, you know, water drop on it and, and there's like a, an explosion of light and, and investiture, then like, and this is later in the Cosmere, like already we see like the white sand being like used by world hoppers. So like later yeah. in the Cosmere, it's like, OK, I got a bunch of sand from Taldane. All right. Can someone remind me, because I have not read white sand for a very long time and never actually finished it. <laughs> Do you ha like, is it just like you put the water on the sand and it does something or you have to be a sand master and do other things to also make it do stuff? You have to be a sand master and it's like and mastering the sand and making it do stuff like drains your water. OK, so the potential idea in this case is the people in Luma would see it as an um, aether but it's not actually the same as the aether spores because those you just drop water on them and something happens so it's like it changes colors and like it does, it does technically colors. release investiture like when you get it wet okay but like okay. it like it releases it to no effect interesting yeah so it changes it from white to black basically if you put water on it yeah, yeah. As someone who hasn't read White Sand, that's very good to know. <laughs> Perfect. You know, you, you can just go to our uh, White Sand episododes of Shardcast and get a pretty good experience. This was so funny. <laughs> OK, Every, that's a good thing for me to do. Uh, as honestly, non reader. They, they are really funny episodes because you get constant David Sass of sassing the, the these. And we did the omnibus as well. Good stuff. Love it. When I was first getting into 17 Shard and listening to Shardcast, I was going through all of the backlog. I specifically skipped both White Sand episodes because I did not care about them. And I was like, I'll just do them last. And then I regretted that when I finally listened to them because they were so amusing and <laughs> funny and just so entertaining, even though I didn't care about White Sand. <laughs> Go listen to those. That's, That's a all. lesson to all of you. Listen to all of our episodes, even if you don't care about the book. <laughs> Sometimes right. they're funny. Sometimes they're funny. Damn straight. We had another one like that. I don't remember which one, though. Should Love be our uh, podcast tagline. So instead of the whole long intro, outro. Sometimes we're funny. Sometimes yeah. we're funny. Shortcast. <laughs> Sometimes we're funny. We talk about Brandon Sanderson stuff, too, sometimes. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Perfect. Nailed it. Cool. Let's go to the next one. So Matt asks, so also talking about Aether, a lot of the Aether spores or all of them we've seen map fairly neatly to a primal essence or element. So we're wondering if that's a continued pattern. What's the essence for the Crimson Aether? Or to put it another way, what's up with the red spikes? The world wants to know. I want to know. Specifically world. me, because I put this question on the list. Yeah, oh, that, that was, look, you beat me to it, but it was definitely, like, top tier on my list for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. What's with the red spikes, Brandon? The, the primal essence of red spikes. It's true, yeah. Brandon, what's with the red spikes? So the red spikes are the aether version of coral, which is, I did not, let's just say, want to do a flesh aether. So we're going in a coral direction as kind of our organic-ish fleshy sort of thing. You understand they're not going to be a one-to-one, -one, right? We might have some wiggle room there, but so far I've done them as a one-to-one. -one. Uh, Matt says, but that is kind of fun, though. If it's uh, kind of mapping to flesh, that's still got kind of a horror or like a scary element to it. Brandon says, imagine it more like carapace and things like that, that uh, as what we might call our flesh for mapping the aethers there. I'm not going to go with some aether that creates giant tumors. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, I did toy with it. It just, you know, certain things don't work well as other things. Um, so the verdant aether is 
Verdant and Rosite have been the two that have always been the most interesting to me. Though, of course, Zephyr is really important for the Space Age Cosmere, right? Being able to have portable air and some propellant that breaks the laws of our universe by propelling, by providing propellant that is small, very compact, and very easy to use as a propellant helps with a bit of Space Age stuff. Cool. <laughs> I really like the um, comparison of the red spikes to coral as the mm -hmm. flesh essence. Yeah. Like, I think that's a very neat way to do it that is not completely horrifying <laughs> because Brandon is a certain type of writer and I think he knows very well that like going too far in like a very, very heavy like buddy horror projection is like not his style. So I think he's done very well to find like a neat um, alternative. Hopefully, Dan writes the Dan writes the tumor aether uh, book. Though. Yeah, like I mean, we, it would be I mean, cool to have Steve. a cancer aether. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cancer it's, aether. Yeah, I also like coral as a an aether. Like this, I I now no longer have problems with. <laughs> pointy red spikes i'm like okay that that <laughs> does yeah. make sense yeah yeah my question is so is it just creating like the skeleton structure mm. of the coral or is like their actual like organic living coral created as well other which like i feel like there has to be otherwise yeah. like this would more clearly map to like a stone yeah, essence sure, sure. than a yeah. flesh essence. Sure. Yeah. I think the fact that like if you were to cut through the is it the verdant essence, the one that causes like trees and stuff yeah. to mm -hmm. grow, mm -hmm. like there would be a tree on the inside as well. Sure. I sure. think that also maps to the coral that like if you cut into it, there yeah. would be organic matter. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I do think it's the living coral that makes yeah. coral red or like makes coral colorful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when it dies, it goes white, I believe. Yeah. I need to know more about coral <laughs> to say you. Don't things. worry. We're going to the great barrier reef next year. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, we'll see a lot Ask of it. the Australian. I feel like there's more coral around Australia than near any of the rest you gotta of us. Be, you gotta be now. watching nature documentaries when you're a teenager. That's what's... Well, I did. I just don't yeah. remember coral details. <laughs> <laughs> the coral. I can't say I know all that much about coral, but I know, like, the big thing with the Great Barrier Reef that, like, people talk about where it's dying is all white. So mm. my un my understanding is dead coral is white and other coral is not white. It Unless like there's a specific color white coral. It is vain. The vein is taking over the barrier rift. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I like that idea. It's not climate but change. It's just vain. <laughs> 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 Ooh, that's going to get us some YouTube comment, comments. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, uh, this this question has helped me kind of uh, revisualize uh, the Crimson Sea, by the way, because originally I was picturing the spikes as like very glass looking, you know, smooth oh, surface, uh, like almost like not like needles, like because they're, they're they have thickness to them, uh, but this kind of uh, smooth texture. And now it's a lot more like yes, this says corals but in my head it's like it has this like organic shape that is mm -hmm. almost like antlers mm -hmm. in this kind of like a little bit yeah. snaky not necessarily tree like uh but like uh yeah. a wavy pattern yeah. yeah i see what you're saying yeah like the imagery of like the spikes being coral way cooler than long straight pointy spikes absolutely yeah for sure and it's like it's it's something like i don't think was made super clear in brandon's text yeah, yeah. oh yeah 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 cool i love that neat it's good clarification okay. now we don't need to guess what the primal <laughs> essence of red spikes is so i like i like yeah. that yeah 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 so Ooh. this next one is veronica um yes 
and it it touches on a subject I'd say is near and dear to my heart, <laughs> but it's not. It just keeps <laughs> finding me. Keeps keep keeps accosting me in dark alleys. I mean, that's that's near. <laughs> it's near. Yeah. It's not dear. <laughs> yeah, it, it's near to my heart. It's not dear. Um, <laughs> in the way that a spike is. <laughs> um. So, like, what research about aethers is Zeisus, uh, Zeisus Raphael, the dragon in Tress, mm -hmm. um, hoarding? Uh, Brennan, his biggest interest is how aethers break down and how, and he's researching the water cycle and trying to figure out how the seethe happens because he's very interested in the decomposition of aethers, which is what's causing the seethe. Interesting. Um, that's what he's hoarding there. He's got quite the establishment in Silverlight as well. Silverlight was once upon a time a bunch of dragon palaces. <laughs> they also have their skyscrapers there, basically. He's taking a little detour for some decades on Lumar, but his home base would be Silverlight. Um, Veronica, <laughs> is that Sakari seclusion typical of dragons, or is it something unique to him? Um, and then we get the dragon lore the dragon lore just, this is welcome to the episode. i'm just gonna read it yeah i'm just gonna read yeah. it okay he's taken a bit of seclusion but i would i wouldn't say there's a whole bunch of different things about dragons if you've got a tamu kek you can contact them you can pray to them and they can actually influence your emotions they're all kind of like little mini gods. They're not immortal, immortal, but they're pretty long lived and functionally immortal. They've been around for a while doing all kinds of stuff. So there's all kinds of things going on with them. Some of them will be secluded. Some of them will take their duties very seriously. Like Frost takes his duties very, very, very seriously. Other ones just don't care. You'll get some themes with dragons. They do like bargains. They do tend to have their interests. They do tend to collect people and have either followers or corporations or things <laughs> like that. I don't want to go too cyberpunk on us, but yeah, you'll see some themes the more you get to know them. I will warn you in the Cosmere, there are more Anne McCaffrey style dragons, lesser dragons if you want, that do not have a human form. The greater dragons, as we will call them, they're basically like amphibians. They have to spend a part of their life cycle in a humanoid form. They give birth in humanoid form. Then they have a transformation in puberty to dragon form. And then they can go back and forth after that. But we've got some Anne McCaffrey style dragons. We've even got some little Drakelings on one planet that are not six limbed and stuff like that. We'll eventually have some more dragons, but when I was writing the early books in the Cosmere, we were a little dragon flooded with Aragon and How to Train Your Dragon, so I didn't write the dragon stories. But maybe someday. Veronica, that's fascinating. And also, that means we got our Tamu Kek, which seems to be a theme with these, because we always have a Tamu Kek somewhere. Brandon, one of the few ways to have an Ansible in the Cosmere in the early days, pre-technology, if you wanted to communicate between planets. This is one of the only ways. Really handy to get a hold of one of those or to get some Sions before we get technological solutions. Those were your two main ways to communicate across planets. Okay. And Ans Ansible being a reference to the Ender series where an Ansible is no. a, not, not the Ender? It's Ursula K. Le Guin. Oh, it's really? It, it predates Ender's game. Oh, and Ursula Scott card I, used it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, uh, but what? anyway, uh, it's a it's a communicate uh, FTO communication device, mm -hmm. faster than light communication, instantaneous communication. Mm -hmm. uh, so cool. Ooh, we can so talk we about this. Start? <laughs> yeah. So we, we we can talk. So this is going to be m much of the episode, honestly. <laughs> this is this one. I, I had forgotten. Title the, it the, dragons. The dragon. Oh, yeah. That's it, the title. It, it, sure. Sure. Well, dragons. We're going to have dragon dragons. palaces in all caps. You can't stop me yeah. from putting it in all caps. I think that's fair, to be honest. <laughs> so sue me. Oh, um, whoever is editing this, probably Eric, find the meme of Brandon, like with his hair crazy. Oh, going the dragons. Yes. Like the I alien. Like the yeah, yeah, yeah. Aliens aliens guy. Guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll put, I'll put that up. on the screen now. Perfect. Nailed it. I, I presumably I did. Um, but. 
Oh my God. So Brandon, you, you know, Brandon sometimes just wants to talk about things sometimes, you know, <laughs> and I remember because I, I produced the call and I'm just freaking out on that call. And you all are just like, wait, what? What is what is happening on this? And that was this was bonkers. Yeah. He just uh, clapped. We, not even prompting. It's just like, oh, research, Sisis. Wow, cool. Trust question. Brands like I, corporations, I, dragon palaces, silver light dragon palaces. <laughs> um, I I remember that this feels distinctly similar to when a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago at this point, Brandon. In hindsight, at the time we didn't realize that, but in hindsight. Brandon had started just answering questions about aethers left and right. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, and and we didn't we didn't know like oh did we did we finally wear him down? Um, but but no, it was he he had written Lost Meadow and he and had Tress. written Tress. <laughs> yeah. And so he was like, I will now tell the people about all the cool things that I've that I've invented. So yeah. like, he, he has finally like figured out Aethers in his yeah. head and like I must share this with the world. I, yeah. I, I, so he this was feels bursting similar. to like tell people. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to see dragons like this in the near future. So, so maybe this is more just like, man, it's so great. I can actually talk about dragons after Tress. Like we we've seen a canonical one. Wow. Cool. I don't know. That's I would not be surprised if we see them in era three. Oh, yeah. Like mm. dragon oh, corporation in era three. Yeah. Oh, hell mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I love I. I always love like I love Dresden files like the the Norse gods is just like, yeah, I run a corporation. Like, I, I love that. That's so fun to me. Yeah. Yeah. I once played a Shadowrun game that is um, cyberpunk. And yeah, there were dragons that ran corporations. They they were trying to kill us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's start with dragon palaces, I guess. I'll we'll go in order. Um, just, just go down I the list. I think it makes a lot of sense uh. that Silverlight, like Silverlight's really weird. We don't know a lot about it really but presumably Has some weird universities yeah so yeah for context like silverlight is a city that exists in the cognitive realm mm -hmm. like between planets yeah so it's kind of like the main bit of civilization that we know of in the cognitive realm yeah that's like not in a planet subastral yeah and i think it makes a lot of sense that dragons like pre-shattering were even like oh yeah I, I went in the cognitive realm this is a cool place and mm -hmm. some interesting confluence of something and so they built stuff yeah, there, there and there, other there's got to be something something there yeah for sure right. mm -hmm. um and and that something can be pre-shattering it can be post-shattering right yeah true um mm -hmm. But I can I can see a world where you know something happens or or something is found and the dragons are like, well, we will go and like live there, investigate, whatever. And they they build their thing and then humans come later on, maybe other species as well. Right. We know there's a population of uh, Maoish descendants there. Mm -hmm. um, they, they go and like they establish. I fully thought. Like my interpretation is like uh, dragons brought human servants with them because like that dragons yeah. aren't going to like yeah. clean like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. they probably uh, did probably did so originally maybe I can mm -hmm. see that but like the presence of you know universities and the fact mm -hmm. that Chris can come and go like I don't think that is like a dragon colony. Yeah anymore i agree i would agree yeah with that. oh yeah 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 but in the early well, days originally... i didn't think it's like there were dragons there and then humans came it's like nah like the first humans were brought by the dragons well and then I, more I would, humans came i would even push back on like just servants because like just based on the way this is answered followers and mm -hmm. like people they've collected mm -hmm. does not necessarily mean servant it's yeah. sort of like yeah. i have a group of scholars they're mine now um and i want them to come with me and 
they can yeah i'll, I'll fund their research because i want the, my scholars to be doing scholarly things and it's a very like possessive sense of like yeah they're my these are my humans oh yeah um, like a, like a my... sort of renaissance patron vibe yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I go there with my company, right? I go yeah. there with my company. Or this is like, yeah, um, I'm moving here permanently. And so all my followers are going to come with me. And that might be like, a, that might be a clan. Or that might be like a, yeah. that might be a town's worth of people by itself yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. They're on garage. It, yeah. It is interesting that a bunch of dragons decided to all go together and form some sort of colony. And it does make me wonder whether it was post shattering and like, mm. Because of the shattering, they came together and went somewhere else to form this place. And since then, they've kind of wandered in different directions. And that's maybe why it's turned more into a maybe a more human centric um, town. Yeah, maybe like you. Or was yeah. it all just academics is the question. Like if it's university based now, was it university based in the beginning? Is it a campus? Yeah. I, I do like the idea that maybe a bunch of dragons are like, well, Yolen sucks now. We're, we're mm -hmm. out of here. And like, all right, this is a cool place. Has a bunch of magic. Like, great. Nice. Uh, there, There is or has been a theory that, that is completely unsubstantiated other than the fact that, hey, there are two interesting things. Maybe they're the same thing. Um, that silver light is either is or is next to the Naltian cognitive anomaly. Mm. Mm. And so if we are, uh, let's say maybe, maybe the cognitive anomaly there is a post shattering thing. We have no idea what a cognitive anomaly means in this context, but like something weird in the cognitive realm, right? And at some point one dragon or some dragons discover that and they're like, Oh, what's going on there? And then they set up camp and then mm. maybe more join them. Maybe all of them go there at the same time. But like, that's one way that this can develop. Yeah. Yeah. It's also interesting how this this gives us more information on kind of the technological timeline of different parts of the Cosmere. Because mm -hmm. we we kind of got from Lost Metal as well that they have kind of moved on quite a bit in what they can create. Like they've got their skyscrapers now, they're looking at nukes. Um, whereas like the books before Lost Metal didn't really give that vibe. It came across like they they were like early 20th century they only just got cars when and now hearing about this like we don't necessarily know when brandon's referring to with like the skyscrapers but it's kind of the same thing it's like oh okay silverlight is maybe much more advanced in terms of their technology that we would understand today in like their society than like I necessarily thought, like I was definitely thinking more like middle ages type mm. setting of like a university campus or something that people come and go from. Sure. But it sounds like it's a lot more in the future than that. I think in my head, it was like mid 20th century kind of technology. Like it, it sounds like you were thinking almost Hogwarts and I was thinking yeah. like Harvard. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll See, I went to a university that had a building that was like Hogwarts. That's like how they sold yeah. it. So yeah, that, that's always what comes to mind for me. Uh, university of Chicago, which is one of the universities are, I was, I was looking at uh, when I was applying back then had like, it's not uh, it, it Hogwarts, yeah, but like it has the, like the old style and like it had, I think, I think it had one building with gargoyles on it. And it yeah. was, oh, the the compulsion to go there just for the vibes was so strong. <laughs> it's like those sandstone buildings are so beautiful and like they draw you in, man. Like you want to go there and be like, oh, I'm at Hogwarts right now. I get to study here. And then you find out that that's actually the administration building and there's barely any <laughs> classrooms and you really don't get to study there. Look, and I will, then you I will... find out the classrooms that are there are actually really bad and you don't want to be in them. I will have you know the administration building at my campus, at my university, which was not University of Chicago, had the best bathrooms. That's true. Love that. That's true. 
that 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 can be the case because the admins are there for sure by okay. far anyway uh yeah I, skyscrapers I, wow. I, I feel like <laughs> they weren't always skyscrapers but they're just the palaces have now like sort of turned into these skyscraper sorts of things but yeah. they're probably <laughs> like magical super awesome skyscraper type things or you know as like newer dragons arrive they're like yeah. well the we we no longer build castles we build you know skyscrapers sure yeah and like this does make sense to me in like the sense of like often i feel like in fantasy like the the most technological place is like the place where like cultures mix Mm. like we get this in legend avatar legend of korra where like republic city or whatever it's called like yeah where like all four nations mix and like is yeah the most advanced so it's like the place in the Cosmere where like the most cultures mix would be silver light. Yeah. Yeah, right. for sure. Yeah. And if it's bringing in all those ideas from the other um, sub astrals and other cultures and it's mixing mm-hmm. them all together, then that's going to really accelerate what they can do. Mm-hmm. Ideas, technologies, magics. Yeah. And like yeah. you have these mini gods of the dragons as yeah. well to help that yeah. along. It's like, OK, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. Who've just like maybe who knows how fast they reproduce and how many there are, but presumably a lot of them remembered pre shattering times. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's an important, important uh, race. I do want to touch on something else before we move on to the next paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> to the next yeah. Paragraph. yeah. A few things still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think we've ever really talked about the name of the city of silver light no yeah now we know some things about silver don't we and now we know some things about silver um we like that's that's a name that's been around for a long time like brandon hasn't uh i was gonna say gallivanted uh hasn't vacillated between like different like it's always been silver light yeah and it has been that case for a long time and that's interesting, right? Because uh, the Ghost Bloods name ended up being a significant name. Seventeenth mm-hmm. uh, Shard has always been, you know, notable. But we've kind of for a long time known why that's notable. Yeah. And I don't know why. Why Silverlight, right? There, there's probably like an easy explanation where, oh, if it's the cognitive anomaly or whatever else is going on by that city maybe there's like like a beam of light you know and it's kind of whitish light and it's like well yeah. that's that's what that is but i wonder if there's something spicier there like the boring answer i've just come up with is that dragon steel like is silvery in oh, color that's so a like, good point. if like For a sure. lot of it is built from dragon steel oh my god sure whoa that like yeah. maybe like light from it is like gleaming silver and like that that is pretty cool though. I kind of hope that's not it. I want there to be a cooler answer. Even <laughs> you want though, it like, to be spicier. I want it to be spicier, but that's a cool visual. It's though. like sad to me that like a city made of dragon steel is the boring answer to me. Yeah, yeah like well, maybe that's <laughs> true. Maybe yeah. that's all true about the appearance, but the name is totally mm-hmm. incidental because it's about the spicier thing. Well. Because we learned later in this interview that silver like destroys investiture, right? That's what silver yep. does. So I'm wondering, I, I hadn't considered that, that like maybe there's something like that going on. But I, I, I actually do think it's more likely that they made it out of some dragon steel thing. And it's like, yeah, well, it's like there could glittering. also be like the sense of like a beacon is like the, mm-hmm. the call for what their name means. It's like this is a beacon in the cognitive realm like this is like it has that connotation mm-hmm. i can see um, there's like a that. sorry please continue i thought i was just going to add like the word it has a sense of like uh, being a, like a protection but um in the shadow hunter books the um capital city of idris from my memory they have like giant towers of light and it just kind of reminds me of that as well and thinking of like the cognitive anomaly, imagine if like that is actually just like this giant silver ball beam of light or something in Shadesmar. Yeah. And yeah. they, yeah, like they built the city around it or something. 
that's kind of the vibe I am thinking of. I don't know if I, if I like believe that, but it's an explanation, right? Sure. I think the, the thing that I don't think is true, which I, I, we haven't actually said, is I don't think it's built from silver or anything like that. Mm, yeah. Because that would be really destructive in like a university setting if it destroys investiture and they're yeah. trying to study investiture. That's, so, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would agree with that for sure. Yeah. I, mm. I find it constructed with dragon steel much more plausible. Yeah. Yeah. I had a, a passing thought of, well, silver light, silver light, silver light, light, Rosharn lights, investiture, <laughs> silver, silver destroys investiture. This is like, like an anti, like a universal anti light type of thing. So maybe some kind of protection, but like I couldn't get that to anywhere coherent. And uh, they didn't know about the stuff until Navani did it, right? Like, I think, what, uh, what was it in the Rhythm of War, Ars Arcanum? Like, Chris they, said, like, discovery of They didn't of know it? how, uh, she, uh, uh, Chris says Navani commanded uh, the creation of, of anti-Stormlight, of mm. anti-investiture. So I don't, I don't know that they didn't know about anti-investiture. I think they didn't know how to make anti-Stormlight, for example. Mm, that's interesting. Mm. Like, or they could have known that it's a theoretical possibility and maybe yep, didn't yeah. know how to do it, right? Yeah. That's possible. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah. The Higgs boson is just like, yeah. was theoretical until it was discovered. It's like, it's, yeah. but like, we kind of knew it was going to be a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just didn't have the means to do it. Yeah, so that that's mm -hmm. possible too. It could be specifically anti-Stormlight, but I feel like it's such and a it, powerful weapon, so I don't know. And it's such a, like, it's a really obvious hypothesis as well. Like, if you've got investiture, then what's the chances that you have something that's the opposite of it? Yeah. Like, that, that, even if you don't have that, like, that's such an easy theory to hold on to and, like, keep looking into. Particularly with, like, the whole, like, the push and pull being foundational. Hey, to yeah, the coming back from our last episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. I was going to say antimatter is not necessarily intuitive, right? Because you well, can, sure. you don't... And so anti-investiture wouldn't necessarily be either. Uh, but mixing in the push and the pull, mm. that gives you a lot of a lot of freedom to go, hey, this thing exists. Maybe its opposite also exists. Mm-hmm. Did you talk about Tamakex? <laughs> Do the next paragraph. Um, oh yeah. That uh that's kind of Tamukex and dragons, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So so, so talking about the, the next paragraph here, um, in, in case you're, you're lost, we don't really know much about Tamukex other than in this paragraph, other than Tamukex is a bone. It's a bone. It's a Shodel bone. Yeah. yeah. The bone phone, oh, if you will. Oh, that's messed up. Shown Shodel being... Well, we've now seen them. Uh, yes, we Absolutely. have met Shodel. Yeah, we, we, we yeah. Uh, end of end of Lost Metal. Oh, Milan. Milan's yeah. epilogue. Uh, yeah. She had a Shodel guide, and in Yumi, uh, I don't think th they're not named, but the description matches oh, that guide. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the other the, planet, the spaceship Humans. went to Utah, where there were Shodel. Yeah, and um, Ryana, the sorceress in Tress, like had like a Shodel like person there with her i, oh, I do not that. know that's what that was I'm pretty sure i don't think that thing had four arms but it don't have four arms everybody yeah they it have is four described arms. as like it's lizard like face humanoid and that's the end of that description yeah the the, the fake charlie the, the yeah. charlie with the light yeah but Shodel are like the third like sapient race from Yolen. Like they are fane life. And like fane like generally has like six limbs instead of four limbs. So like dragons also fane. Yes, that's why here a Shodel bone can let you commune with a dragon. They're both fane, I guess. Sure. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. It is slightly horrifying that like the Tamukek burn phone is like 
a burn from a being. So pre all, all like pre technology well pre technology <laughs> in the Cosmere, these people were probably hunted so that people could get Tamukex so they were able to communicate across the Cosmere, and that is a horrifying thought to me. Why not dragon bones? That doesn't make sense to me. Then you have to kill a dragon. They don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, would it work? Much the... Yeah. Or um, why wouldn't it work? One other thing we know about right. Tamu Kex is that like they are related to singer gem hearts, mm. which like kind of makes sense. Like the gem heart being like what allows them to take forms, like like take in a spread, and, like so like connection to the realms stuff. And also, mm. um, oh, there, there, there's the thing where all singers can like attune to the same, like the rhythms are external mm. and all the singers can like listen to those, right? There is a little bit of that with here, uh, with, with this, where, you know, maybe anyone with a Tamuke can like, you know, the dragons are external in the same ways that the rhythms are external. And so anyone can like reach out to them. Um, mm. Interesting. So is Brandon saying that you can only call dragons with these or that you can call dragons and or anyone with a Tamukek? I think the implication here is that with a Tamukek, you can call a dragon. OK. Yep. yep. Like there's interplanetary communication, but only to dragons. Mm hmm. Hmm. Mm. But like presumably Let's like a dragon less. could like contact like anyone with a Tamu Keck. Maybe yeah. that's why dragons like became useful. It's like, okay, like I'm the interchange, I guess, between them, maybe. <sighs> Unclear if it goes both ways. Right. I don't I don't know yeah. if a dragon can reach people with Tamu Keck. Because so I'm I'm reading like what Brandon says here, and the context to me is like, well, dragons are like mini gods. And so there's this whole idea of, you know, followers or priests of a god being able to, like, reach out to that, god, like, send mm. their plea, send their prayers. Um, and and the, the Tamukek seems to kind of fill that niche or that stereotype a little bit. Uh, obviously, it's not exactly a parallel, but that's kind of the Cosmere version of that. Interesting. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking of like the last paragraph where Brandon's talking about um, communication and just like the only ways to communicate are like this or seons between planets. Oh, if you have to go through a dragon, then you have to convince the dragon to help you. And that seems like that seems less useful than if you could just like communicate with another Tamukek as yeah. well. So Which makes I me think the think important thing to know that. is that like these are the only ways. It doesn't mean they're good ways. That's, that's, oh, yeah. that's true. Uh, yeah. I do think it could be possible for a Tamukek to call another Tamukek potentially uh, and the dragons. Maybe dragons could like spy into the conversation and things like that. that right. That would be interesting. You know, um, so like they can be used by humans, but like it, it, there's like a risk element to it where it's like, OK, well, there's these other very powerful beings and it's not necessarily secure, maybe. Um, yeah. I mean, especially if they can influence your emotions when you have the Tamukek. So that's yeah. interesting. It gives me some serious like ruin vibes like mm. you, you hold it. You have a little bit of a hole for like a dragon to. Maybe not send the thoughts directly, uh, but I mean, you can influence emotions and stuff. So it also kind of implies like another one of those overarching um, Cosmere wide abilities now. Like it's not just soothing and rioting that affect emotions. Mm -hmm. There's just abilities across the board that can affect emotions. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's the unmade, right? Oh, yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. The, the thrill really riots your, you know, bloodlust and things like yeah. that. Ashert Marn. Ashert Marn, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe others as well. I think what we're really seeing, um, like, over the last couple of years, because there's been, like, a lot of comparisons of 
particularly Stormlight to Mistborn of, oh, this thing in Stormlight is similar to this thing in yeah. Allomancy. And what we're just seeing is like all of it being pulled back to yeah. these uh, overarching yeah. back that distill down differently. And yeah. that's that's a big reason for why I, from the get-go, when I read Yumi, thought that the father machine being awakened was not a breath awakening. Mm. It was a sign of, because mm -hmm. it has been for a little while, uh, maybe since rhythm of war, but it's, it's something I became cognizant, uh, just aware of in the last year or two was that more and more of the Cosmere becomes more and more general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, so I am, I am on board with, uh, yeah, that's kind of my my default assumption now when I see things like that, and that's really cool because it means that we can have these ideas pop up in different places and um, look different and be applied differently. Like yeah. we can have light weaving done in different ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like you have like the base level of tools. And you can combine them in new and fun ways. Yep. Yeah, I dig it. Cool. Should we should we talk about dragon sex? Yeah, well, yep. yeah. So dragons have functional immortality. We, we talked about the corporations and stuff. Good. Cool. Let's talk about the dragon life cycle. And uh, I ooh, we'll talk about Jess's favorite theory. <laughs> I can't remember what it is. Oh, Dragon oh, no. Lift. Oh. I can't. OK, someone's going to have to go through the Dragon Lift theory. <laughs> OK, yeah, OK, let's talk about the general. Like the, let's talk about this. I'll, I'll, oh, I will. No, I remember is, what's going on with this theory. She, she I, I think I remember it, but yeah. Cultivation's daughter. No, 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 no. Even, oh, I haven't oh, heard that one. I haven't heard that one. That's kind of good. Because I like that. Makes sense. No, 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 like, no, no, no. There's more. That's there's what more, I thought people more. were going for. No, okay. no. So I, I am interested now. Oh, I'll okay. tell you all about well, it. Let's start with the biology lesson, and then we'll get into the example. <laughs> yes. Okay, so okay. Let's, let's, let's start with the thing that is said. Trans transformation in puberty to dragon form. Um, there is sort of like, there's... Um, Something that happens, we all change in puberty, but they change more than other people yeah, do. A little bit. There is an. Uh, this might be off the record. Okay. Um, I was just like, there is an experience that AFAB people have that when we hit puberty, there's sort of like a, an event that happens that marks the real, like wow. you're a you're a real girl now. Yeah. Um, when when thing. you transform into a giant lizard. When we transform into <laughs> a giant lizard, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with <laughs> you know, when we grow, every, everyone has and, that. Yeah, yeah. A well, draconian I mean, form. Not, yeah. And it's sort of like I like I can already like imagine like kind of like the culture of like when you're a teen dragon. Like, has it, ha has it happened for you yet? Oh, <laughs> I heard that. Um, you know, like yeah, like our friend did it last week. Like you know. It's like they're like they're so like and it's like oh they're so grown up you know like and stuff like that it's sort of like the sense of like i can immediately just in my mind's eye see like how the teen dragons feel about it um no, I see oh that. you're just a late bloomer like it'll like you, like it's not gonna you're not gonna not turn into a dragon you just have to be patient this, <laughs> i just had a vision of a high school yes. full of dragons in yes. humanoid form <laughs> yes yes it, the, <laughs> exactly. it's, it's like an 80s uh, movie <laughs> type thing uh, uh, I school movie, yeah. my high school, but sure, uh, my yeah, was like two thousands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like early two yeah. thousands. Yes. yes, gossip. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> absolutely. Prepubescent <laughs> dragons, and then uh, at some point, just some uh, like the main <laughs> character. That girl just turns into a giant dragon yeah. and like eats and the bully <laughs> or something. And that's like, like there's hey, there we go. We're done. There's going to be a party <laughs> at the end of the week. Uh, at, at like Frost is like because Frost has rich parents and like they've got a big house <laughs> so there's going to be a party there but only the dragons who have transformed are invited yeah <sighs> it, it, the fanfic writes itself <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it really, uh, it really does <laughs> um, and so it's interesting that they're they have to give birth in humanoid form that and like give birth to humanoids and then later they turn into dragons and then they can shapeshift uh back and forth crazy 
Uh, well, it may be that let's say you're a dragon and you give birth at like 300 years. Like, like oh, sure. you're, you're way, way past your your teen year, like your transformation, right? Oh, sure. And so maybe the limitation is just you have to switch to that form to to give birth. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, fair. I have a feeling this is Aiden Alzium's fault. Probably. Yeah. Because like like Aiden Alzium like made it so like made singers able to have vulnerable relations with humans so it's like oh i'm making these really cool lizards they should sometimes they have we... to be humans for part of the time so we can have some dragon <laughs> human hybrids i i want i want these different things that i'm creating to bone it's important to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think also there's just like the meta answer of brandon doesn't want to figure out how it works with dragons just turn them into humans everyone understands <laughs> Which, True. given the number of times dinosaur erotica has come up in streams, that's <laughs> shocking. True. True. Our, our guy, Chuck Tingle, we love him. In yep. the science fiction fantasy community. Actually, the next author to collaborate in the Cosmere. Dan Wells, <laughs> Isaac Stewart, Chuck Tingle. Boom. Nailed it. That's, that's, that's not real news. That's not real news. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not <laughs> real news. That was not confirmed in the interview. Uh, Don't... <sighs> I can never have fun. No, you can't. We did the entire <laughs> row we April Fool's. Because we're going to get a joke in. So what, I just need the caveat afterwards. Yes. No, the audio no. listeners <laughs> won't see our facial expression to know that we know you're joking. No, audio listeners should know that I'm foolish. Okay, that's true. <laughs> um, don't believe anything Evgeny says. Don't ever. believe his don't, lies. Don't believe his lies. <laughs> 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 okay okay do you want me to tell you about drag the dragon lift theory because honestly yes, yes. i didn't even get as far as the cultivation uh lift daughter thing i just thought that uh people thought lift is like special in certain ways and she like doesn't want to get older and so wouldn't it be cool if there was a character already that we know was a human who will turn oh, into yeah. a dragon and mm -hmm. what the the candidate we have is lift right and so when uh she hits puberty uh but maybe that's already happened this it's it's kind of unclear I, she, she has hit puberty, puberty. <laughs> she has hit puberty yeah. but maybe yeah. like in dragons yeah. it's a little different i don't know but then she turns well, into like, a dragon you know it it, do, it doesn't have to be like the turn of puberty. It can happen. It just says it happens in puberty. That that that's a long oh, that's oh. a long spread of time. Yeah. Whoa! What if? <laughs> Remember how we were uh, saying how it Brandon's? Oh, now he's talking about the dragon thing because he's figured it out. What if Liv turns into a dragon in Stormlight Five? Okay. And Brandon's I wanna, figured it out. I want to put a. I want to put a like a just I a, bosh. a just a cork on this conversation <laughs> because there is a later question that talks about lift okay is and there? I, yes oh and I, and I would like us to when we get there reconsider whether this nonsense makes sense there were <laughs> oh yes that's true nonsense. <laughs> yeah that's that's a good point actually um <laughs> I, need um, to I do have one comment see if i should hold my objections or not yeah, I do want a surprise secret dragon yes. who didn't yes. know they were a dragon yeah. until like, yes, it that's happens. so good. Because like, I think that would be a very interesting story. It doesn't need I to be lift. Be I don't clear. think it's lift. I don't think it's lift either. But I just wanted to explain the theory because I know Jess really hated it. <laughs> and I needed to. Absolutely. I needed to get Jess's reactions on video. OK, it's important to me. Um. Is that you don't like Lyft and you really like dragons, or is that... Firstly, I don't think that these dragons give birth and then abandon this child or not tell them they're a dragon. I don't think they raise these children and be like, I'm just going to keep it a secret, and then, then they'll just turn into one one day i don't think that would happen most well, of the even, time yes but and this is like a, this is an extraordinary circumstance like oh shit something there's something really bad happened and now like uh there's a Their disaster and yeah. then i've and then a human comes along and it's like oh there's an abandoned human baby or like some 
something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, like don't maybe know about maybe him. you were a dragon mom, and <laughs> you have you have made you're you're severely wounded, and you have made your way to the to the top of the dragon mount. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and you are being pursued by humans, and you have time to just okay. give birth and divert attention from your child, and your child has to grow up somewhere else, not knowing that they are a dragon. As a sheep herder between two rivers. For example, yeah. It's Doesn't a dragon, need to be, too. But okay, that's, that's a wheel good. of time. I like that. Yeah, no, that's good. I like that. That's a good joke. Um, Took me a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, More than that, though. Yes. Because I had another point. Yes, this perfect. is yeah. the one yeah. that I was telling to Eric. Um, I feel like a dragon would probably still feel different themselves growing up to other humans. So even if they're like put with a human family, the humans tell them they're a human, they would probably start noticing that things are different and be like, why am I different to other people? And the thing that always comes to mind is there are animals that exist that go through different life stages. They're still the same animal. And I don't think that they don't know that like a frog is still a frog even when it's a tadpole i guess we just don't know what teen dragons think and feel <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> we, like, we, like we don't know yet it could i think it could go either either direction until brandon shows us the inside mind of a dragon which yeah we would a pov dragon let's have it please but i would like to think that like the way dragons think and feel is not the same as a human. So like, even though they're humanoid, they're not human. And they probably do start noticing at some point that, hey, what I'm feeling is different to what you're feeling and how we interact. Well, it's like the ugly duckling. He probably just think like it was, it's not like, oh, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a duck. He probably, I'm a really weird duck. Was yeah, what he yeah. happened until he met a swan. So it's sort yeah. of like, I'm a really weird human, which mm -hmm. until it happens, people are like, oh, I get that. You f you're like, a, everyone feels like a weirdo until mm -hmm. I don't until know. you turn into a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is this is this is the Brandon's Cosmere adaptation. It's like some DreamWorks or Pixar movie <laughs> where, where it's like it's, it's it, like you, you can just totally see exactly how this goes the parents died uh the humans <laughs> took the the dragon in and the the main uh protagonist is trying to find out who she is who she really is and she turns she out to be a giant dragon <laughs> there there is a there's a scene where the little protagonist is like in in like in their bedroom or in their like somewhere in the house and like the transformation triggers briefly and then destroy the room yes, and then they collapse scene. back to to yes, human form yes exactly <laughs> yes yeah 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 if anyone has like ever seen titans that's like literally the first scene. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Oh. Uh, my brain is just going to like the old Disney Channel original movie, the 13th year, where it's just like a guy is just a surprise mermaid. And like, <laughs> yeah, because like, of course you oh, would I, like, yeah. uh, like think like, oh, I'm not like other people, but like everybody else thinks they're not like other people mm -hmm. until surprise track. Yeah. I, 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 have, I hate I hate when I'm a surprise mermaid. <laughs> you love it. I have you realized like when I you were a surprise mermaid. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yes. I've realized that um the example you gave, Shannon, is such a perfect example, but it actually the the reason that I had all of these thoughts originally was because I hated the lift theory. And this supports the lift theory. <laughs> it it. But I don't I don't want Lyft to be a dragon. I, look, I, she's not gonna be I a dragon. I don't want Lyft to be a dragon. So. I don't think that's gonna be the case. However, if Brandon has this life cycle for a dragon, I do want a surprise dragon. Okay. Like that's <laughs> that's it practically He's put the gun on the mantle. He needs to fire it at some point. Yes. Yeah. Fire that dragon somewhere. Yeah. Let's dragon go. Gun. Fire that teen dragon, dragon somewhere. 
it's like oh my my parents found me as a baby and that's all you need like as yeah. your justification or Instant like dragon. or you know what if it happened early enough maybe they don't even know they're adopted every but... orphan in the cosmere is potentially a dragon potentially <laughs> stuss yeah <laughs> but 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 what if lift is a dragon in stormlight I think this is I think this is possible. I think it's uh but just because it's possible doesn't, doesn't mean doesn't we mean have to probable. We don't have to get on board. It's true. You know. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I think though. the problem I always have when things like this come up is like if it had happened in the book, like there would have been the foreshadowing that we didn't quite mm. see but is in the back of our brains. Mm. So when it happens, it's like, "Oh man, that's awesome. That's natural." This just feels like you've thrown a dot at a board that's like crazy theory. Well, and if it no, turns out you. true, then I kind of hate it. Because it's, yeah, because it's like Lyft has existed for four books. Four books? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Five, technically, but five. If you okay. count the novellas. Yeah. Uh, no, four, because yeah, she's four. not in Way of Long. Kings. Yeah. Fair. So, all, all, all that's true, but maybe go reread the Lyft sections and see if there's a foreshadowing that we missed. <laughs> Maybe it's just you just you know what it would I, I'm just saying what if it was really cool where Lift Kit is like, wow, what if I could fly with my AVR and then she turns into a truck and it goes okay, fly with all right, all right, yeah. Okay, let's move yeah, on. Okay, all right, all right. We have a lot of wobs to go you through, know, and we've gone through one. Okay. We knew we were gonna spend a lot of time yeah, on dragons. That's true. Mm-hmm. I had one more thing from this world that I okay, wanted to okay. okay. yeah. <laughs> Like, the very first paragraph, can we talk about, like, what Z- oh, Zyces yeah, we should probably is actually about- doing? <laughs> yeah, we should oh, probably talk yeah. about that. That's- His research sounds so cool to me. Like, I am not a marine mm-hmm. biologist, but, like, it's close enough to my interests that I'm like, I wish Brandon would just give us a book that's, like, Zyces research. <laughs> See, like, give us a theory paper. Make him write a paper that's like scientific. Okay. Um, I will that that's interesting because I that is the most boring answer <laughs> that I could have imagined. And I think there was like a previous like a live stream or yes, something where someone was. was asking, Hey, what is what is Zyces doing? And Brandon was like, Oh, he's studying the water cycle. And I'm like, that is, you were a dragon, Demica, <laughs> and you were studying the water. Like, why are you doing this? It's well, like the water cycle on Lumar is weird. Bonkers. It's weird. It's bonkers. Okay, weird. it's bonkers. Like, but the like, scene why? is so weird. But why are you? You like, want to know why it works? And why are you, you, are you just curious? <laughs> yeah, dragons are going to live forever. I want to figure mean, out like, problems. You like the fundamental, like, base curiosity of what drives all science? <laughs> yeah, like, it's just <laughs> science, <laughs> right? <laughs> But okay, but the rhythm of war, ours or canum, has Chris imply not not even imply, just say, hey, Foyle's intended purpose or Foyle's stated purpose is that he wants to control the Aethers. And so mm-hmm. we went from that version of Ho- of of Hoid, a foil. Hey, that's somebody who wants to control the Aethers to the version where this guy's like, hey, water's interesting. Uh, okay. It's not you, water, it's weather. It's if you figure the, out how it works with the water and the Aethers and the sea, then you can control the Aethers. Can you? I like... I, 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 I want there could. to be a connection between. I want there to be a connection. I just don't see it at the moment. I think okay. I think maybe is. he can see more than you. Yeah. Well, just maybe he's a fictional character and I'm a human being. He's got he's got decades of life to be like, I don't decades. know if there's something here, but I need like let's cross it off the list. I like this episode <laughs> where we dump on Argent. It's very fun. <laughs> well uh, eat my dragon. Okay. Uh but also, I find it very funny that Brandon says this about the water cycle. 
because on that stream you're referring to Evgeny, Brandon was like, you know, I'm not really going to talk about the science of it because it's it's pretty crazy. And meanwhile, Brandon's like, oh, yeah, but there's totally a character figuring it out. And that could be like really important. I'm like, Brandon, if you don't want to talk about that, why are you why are you doing it? This time? About it. <laughs> like, OK, <laughs> you know, that that just seems like you're going to need to explain it in a wob sometime to some some nerds named us. Maybe, you know, sometime. Evgeny, you're going to be so sorry when in about 17 years we're going to come out and no, so he's going to no. have, he's gonna I, I have his not. ether control. I, I will not. I will not be sorry. I will be excited when that happens. <laughs> OK, the rest of us will be vindicated in the, re uh, the reason. The reason I am annoyed, I'm annoyed right now is because I don't see that connection right now. Okay. Like if Brandon's answer had been, hey, he is studying the water cycle because he thinks that by controlling the water, he can control the aethers. That would have been 100 percent fine with me and we would not be having this conversation at all. Yeah, there's just like that wasn't the whole answer either. It's uh, the seed, the decomposition. It's like he wants to understand them. Like maybe that's why he's on Lumar is power. And, and he's been researching aethers for like centuries or millennia and this is just like okay this is this wacky stuff i gotta go figure that this part out this is a piece of the grand aether puzzle okay i think but, um oh, like everything you just said arjun i think that's actually what he's just trying to find out in world like he's asking the same questions that you just asked <laughs> <laughs> despair <Okay. laughs> evgeny despair that's an emote I'm just like mm. let's let's circle back to this in 17 years I, okay. i'm writing this down as a, <laughs> put, put a reminder what, yeah exclamation mark reminded me 17 years <laughs> next so, time next time ethers come up um, so i had a i had a a, a a a reminder pop up on my calendar a few years ago uh that was like uh like on, on whatever date it was like um uh marry uh, uh this girl on this date if we are not married by by that oh point. those things those are always mm -hmm. so awkward yeah in 19 years when the ethers and like frost yeah, comes yeah, yeah, up yeah. again we're gonna be like god we were <laughs> so annoying back then yeah yeah so so uh listeners if it if the year is like 2047 <laughs> or whatever and we like and, and this conversation is relevant for some reason and you are listening to like a 20 year old podcast um uh first of all i'm glad that hey, thanks for watching the show yeah, yeah <laughs> thank, thanks for watching that <laughs> that's one hell of a backlog oh yeah uh, so oh boy you. Uh, but also you have personal permission to like tag me in whatever yes. form of internet communication exists at that point and be like hey argent 20 whatever years ago you were complaining about this thing i am i this is now biting you in the ass 17 years from now would be 2040 and i don't like that sounds yeah. fake that don't sounds tag like fake. me i don't care I so. think, I think 20 2040 is 40 years from now i'm pretty sure <laughs> <laughs> yes yes of course yes indeed <laughs> Um, okay, yeah. so I have a I have a theory that okay. maybe Good. might connect things for you, Arjun. Okay, all right, um, hit me. This kind of reminds me a little bit of cancer and like what happens in the body where cells have signals that turn off and on. Okay. And cancer is like comes about from when cells have the signal turned off that makes them die and the one that makes them yep. reproduce turned on which causes tumors. I'm wondering if he's trying to figure out how the decomposition works so he can stop the decomposition and allow for like a rapid expansion of aethers at some point that can be used for something. That's the I mean, theory that just came to my yeah, mind. This is this, this just all tracks to me because knowing like, you know, like, oh, once upon a time, I wanted to be an ornithologist, which is a bird scientist. Um, and then day to day, what do bird scientists actually study? They go and they take uh, soil samples and they take water samples um, and they're they're looking at composition of the the environment that the birds live in and there's actually very little looking at the birds a lot of the time um, because 
learning about the birds is also learning about Okay. everything about so it's sort of like this is kind of like how i came into this conversation this is the knowledge i already have about how on the ground science uh like works just from you know i like i like the the, the scientists on twitter sphere that's it's fun and it's like oh i literally it never would have occurred to me that it was relevant to know soil composition that sounds so boring um but that's that that's that's just my angle science yeah. Like it makes me wonder if Xyces is going to come up as a antagonist in hmm. the future. That'd be fun. And like this is something he's trying to weaponize. Hell he's the yeah. villain of the Aether novels. Yeah. That'd be sweet. He's the alien invader. Uh, look, I do want an alien invasion Aether. story. I do. Lost metal's not sufficient for that. I just, just no. to be no. more aliens. <laughs> more aliens. I want it full scale. Uh, oh my God, guys! I mean, we knew that Wob was going to take a while, but uh, you know, we, we can might hurry we, through. We might, we might have a third episode that we're not recording today. Uh, maybe, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how no, we go. We'll, we'll breeze through the list. Uh, I'll see. I'm, let's just start and not talk about how much left we have to go. Yeah. And like, let's just go. Yeah, let's yeah. just go. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's do the next one. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's Evgeny. OK, so uh, we have a follow up on the whole dragon thing that Brandon just talks about uh, unprompted, uh, where he says that in the original Dragon Steel novel series, uh, there's a point where Hoyd gets a hold of a Tamukek and calls and calls Frost just to kind of prank him. Frost thinks it's an actual devotee praying to him, and it turns out it's just Hoyd. He's found one, and is yeah, that's from twenty, that's from nineteen ninety nine. Dragon Steel, mm -hmm. when Dragon Steel Prime comes out, uh, you'll be able to read Hoyd pranking Frost with a Tamil kick. Uh, that's probably going to be part of the Words of Radiance Kickstarter, yep. which is scheduled for March twenty fourteen at the moment. Twenty yep. fourteen. Yeah, twenty 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 four. <laughs> mm. uh, March 2014 is when Words of Radiance released. I, that was that was it was a you brain were, miss. It was a brain misfire, but it misfired in the right neighborhood. In the correct direction. <laughs> yes. Uh, as, as he would, because he's Hoyd. Say I and Brandon says as he would. Yep. Uh, he was trying to prove that Frost was a dragon. And Frost was not letting on that he was. He was hanging out as an old dude, and uh, Hoyd got him. Nice. Good for Hoyd. Sounds that's fun. Pretty, that, that sounds funny. Yeah. Is that what happened, Eric, as the person who's read Dragon Steel here? I can't comment on that, Ian. And also, it's been so long <laughs> that I Do don't think remember anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he remembers? Yeah, you think I remember? Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm very excited for you all to read it yeah. and for me to reread it to be like, what is going on here? Yeah. Just, how is it going? Good. We're trying to reach you for your extended car warranty. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want skyscraper insurance for your <laughs> dragon palace? <laughs> for the dragon palace. It's like, oh my god, please stop calling me. I'm going to take my followers and break that bone. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, Matt asks, originally, Kaladin and Moash were essentially the major dark eyes who were in a position to criticize the nobility and light eyed culture. Now that Kaladin has kind of, if not emotionally, bought into the system to some extent by outranking most light eyes and Moash has gone full villain. Are we going to get another character playing that role of a dark eyed or lower class individual who is critiquing the system? Brandon says, yeah, I've been looking at that. One of the questions is whether Lyft can justifiably fill that role as someone who considers herself a bit of an outsider, even among the Radiants. But let's hang a bit of a raffle on that. Ask me again after you've read book five. I have a sense that Brandon did not quite understand the distinction of dark eyes here or why it was specified dark eyes or lower class. Because uh, when you say outsider, that's not really the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. very different kind of story. 
Mm-hmm. Like Lyft yeah, does I feel like- sort of fo- like have that role in Edge Dancer, but it's kind of hard. Like once you move all the radiance to the tower, it's like how do you continue to have that role? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like once you're radiant, period, you're not a lower class person. Yeah, like yeah, it's like this kind of has to be like a non radiant character doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like, it, like I think it could have been Kaladin, but it's sort of like he's not he's not interacting with that part of the story at all mm-hmm. anymore. Like I think he yeah. could have um, mm-hmm. is the thing, um, and it might, it might have been it might have been interesting to like have that flip. But it's sort of yeah. they're, they're, he's sort of disengaged from that entire aspect. And, yeah, and it's, now it's difficult because like our story is largely taking place in Eurythia. Like, the whole, like, Alethi caste system is... We're not in Alethgar anymore. Mm -hmm. And some of that is, like, has been carried over to Eurythiru. But we don't engage with that as much. Mm. I would say anymore, even. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because it's... What what bothers me is because like uh, I think this was sort of taken to be like as a general overall all Roshar thing, whereas the caste system is very specifically a Voren thing, which mm-hmm, Lyft yeah. isn't even a part of. Yeah, uh, like she she doesn't she's kind of outside the whole caste system already, but not in a sense of oh she's an outsider and this is this is the same kind of story. It's she's not a she was never a dark eyes in the Voren caste system, sure. so it's mm-hmm. like it's not. There's no room for her to criticize the system in the same way that Khaled and Armoash were in the first few books. Um, yes, everything you said is true. But I think there's a little bit more on top of that. Uh, so I largely agree with you, but Lyft does, or well, did at least before she became a Radiant. Now, everything's changed. Uh, but like, because she is Reshi, uh, that's running around other kingdoms, there is a little bit of that, oh, she is, she's an outsider, she doesn't belong, she's being mistreated, people are making assumptions about her, and all of that. I don't think a lot of that stuff is relevant for the question, or is, or, or even has been like addressed in the books to a significant extent, but but like I, I think that's kind of what Brandon was thinking here. That like she's not a native Alethi person or a Vaden person or you know whatever or a, a Azish person. She is an outsider, but she's an outsider with like power and privilege. I agree that it's not relevant to the question that was actually asked. <laughs> is yeah. what I'll say to that. It's like yep. that's interesting. But it's not what Matt asked. Nope. It's not. Yeah. So a thought I've just had that is also kind of like doesn't match like the words Brandon said is that like Lyft is an edge dancer. Like she will remember those who have been forgotten and listen to those who have been ignored. So it's like I could see is like her plot line engaging this intersecting with this like dynamic and like going and like speaking and like interacting with people like where like this dynamic is important not as like where like she's like the lens like where we get to experience it from but like it's not from her directly which is not what i think brandon is saying here but i think would work better like i could see it being the avenue for this but not being like the source of this Okay. We're going to ask him after book five. Got to ask him after book five. Yeah, I could sort of see, like, like looking through that lens of, this is an outsider looking at this system and seeing the flaws that someone who's in the system might not necessarily see as well. Which book Uh, is Lyft meant to be? Six. Is she six? six? Mm -hmm. She's six. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe Brandon, maybe Brandon setting it up so that in book six we do start going back a lot more 
to seeing that caste system and getting more criticisms back into it. Because that would be good, because that's like a really big world building thing in the first, what, two books? Two. Two, two and a half. Yeah. Two and it's a half. Just, yeah. So, it's and so it just difficult kind of for me. Yeah, yeah it, it's so difficult for me to imagine back five like dealing with class dynamics in any serious way yeah. when the threat is less, hey, are you being mistreated by someone of an upper class and more, is everyone going to die? Yeah, mm. but like the scale is so different. Mm. So I, I don't know. I feel like this is set dressing that Brandon made and then we move past it to the stuff yep. Brandon wanted to do. Well, and I, I think it's way too fundamental to just be set dressing because if you've ever studied this, times of crisis don't erase it or cover it up. It sure. actually even makes it worse. Like class is actually part of how people interact with crisis. And it's it do, it's not like, oh, wow, now we get to uh you know it's like how can we think of such a thing it's like people aren't even consciously thinking of a, such a thing it's how they unconsciously interact with the sure. world and deal and prioritize and deal with the problems it's it's invisible it's there the whole time so it's uh yeah but i th it, i think the the eyes we are going to see this through are going to be radiant eyes yeah and that's the, like all the radiance are going to be outside of that system yeah Mm. like we're not gonna like book eight or whatever well i think that's actually my objection is that i don't think i think there could have been a world where i think brandon maybe treated this a little bit differently where kaladin does not think of himself as a light eyes no matter what yeah uh like his, like no matter how they were changed because of the radiance stuff um like I still think of Kaladin as a dark eyes. Like that's that is like kind of who he is. Like that's how he was brought up. It's it's kind of also a race thing, not just uh you sure. got uh, you got leveled up to the neck to another cast. Um and so like to me it's almost like it's like a missing step. It's kind of weird that that's just absent in Kaladin's way of thinking now. Sure. Yeah. It's like it's like he he's culturally like are still like in his mindset and way of thinking still a dark eyes and it's like but it's not treating it like he is so mm -hmm. and i think that with I the war with. we could have had more of that in the confrontations with him and his father but a lot of those confrontations were more about oh you're a soldier you're killing yeah. not about you're now acting like the class that made our family's lives yeah. hell for so long. Mm -hmm. And now that that conflict between Kaladin and Liren has kind of been fixed, I don't think we can open it up again in a different way to explore that. Mm -hmm. So it just, yeah. it feels like a missed opportunity. Yeah, I think all of this yeah. is a missed opportunity. Brandon's not yeah. going to re really explore yeah. for sure. Yeah, and and, and the re the reason this is happening is right. Uh, it is because this is not what's interesting to Brandon. Yeah, I think Brandon that's wants yeah. the epic fantasy, the the magic, the big fights, the gods, like all of that yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep, I I think that's accurate. Yep, <laughs> that's true. Yep. And like there are other out authors out there like where who are more interested in this and would will and write it better than Brandon yeah. potentially would have. Yeah. 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 One way yeah. I could see it happening, which I don't think is going to happen, because I don't think Brandon would want to go this way, but I also don't think this would personally I don't think this would happen. But if Moash did get a redemption arc then we could see more through Moesh's eyes where he's not a villain anymore, but he's still very critical of the system. I don't think it's going to happen, we'll but see. it could go that way. That, like that, that could be, be an avenue to still explore it. And then you could still have the dynamic with um, Moash and Kaladin except it's not like as villainous and it's more like how can we make societal change and moash is that critical voice that is kind of pushing for it so i think this is going to be incredibly difficult um especially if you want this to happen in human society 
because I don't think there is a world where you reintroduced Moash in like the human world in anything under like two or three books because you need like you need that redemption arc to really breathe i am kind of interested in the idea of moash if we were to have a redemption which big question but if we were to have that have that happen in the singer community Because you have a little bit of history there with uh, uh, Rhythm of War, where Moash was like, hey, these these people are being mistreated in the same way that the Dark Eyes were being mistreated. I can help that. I can, I can, be, I can be the Kaladin to these singers that Kaladin was to bridge for, essentially. And so... I, I think there's a, an interesting possibility there of if you accept the idea of a Moash redemption, throw him in with the singers, have him have him like play a role that is how 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 I, I've so I I have been a victim of the light eyes. And you, at least some of you, have been victims to the light eyes. How do we now exist in this world where there are still light eyes, but they're like, but there's also another enemy out there. Especially mm -hmm. if book five, it gets to the point where the war does cease to some point and the singers and the humans have to find a way to live together on Horshar. Yeah, like, because I, I do just think we're, we're not getting Alethi cast dynamics, but I do think we're going to get human singer relations and those dynamics yeah. like that. That's, I think, yeah. where this is going to be going. So. That's almost the successor of that kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, cool. Jess, let's do the next Two one. Questions down. Yes. Hey. hey. Okay, so the next question was another one Argent asked. Uh, oh, the Lost Battles Ars Arcanum calls hemallergic decay a thing of the past. The term has been used to describe the loss of power in spikes outside of bodies, as well as the small amount of power that is lost at the moment a spike is created. Which one of those things no longer happens? Brandon said the first one, the decay of spikes outside of the body. They have figured out how to make this no longer a thing. So it's still a thing that happens in the Cosmere. They just know how to avoid that completely. Yes. I think this is a David question. Uh, <laughs> and we've actually recorded a Hemalurgy episode that will come out sometime. Uh, and David had opinions. And I know Jess yeah. also <laughs> has opinions. So this episode is coming out. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> um, I, I know David thinks that Brandon might have misunderstood the question mm -hmm. um, and mis like a answered it in a way that is not what the question was trying to get at. Uh, personally, I think that Brandon did answer the question asked and that it makes complete sense. Let me, um, let I me agree with you that like I believe Brennan answers the question. I don't like his answer because it means Chris phrased that horribly. Yeah. Like I could accept like Chris phrased it horribly. I've always thought that like hemologic decay still exists. Nobody's mm -hmm. doing anything with hemology though. So when Marsh talks about it, uh, when it's like a thing of the past, it's more, yeah, it happened in the past. That doesn't mean it can't still happen now. Mm. Yeah, it's like my read is that like, yeah, it's in our past because like we know like, it's like. <sighs> what's a good example? Uh, cholera, Black Plague. Sure, uh, that like, yeah, like it can still happen. It's just like our health systems are just so more advanced that like it's not going to spread across the planet unless yeah. it's called COVID. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think part of David's 
argument, which I'm not going to do justice here, but that episode will come mm-hmm. out. You'll get to hear it. I'll hopefully put a card to that future episode in this later. But he was just saying, but in the final Empire time, they did know how to mitigate it. So like what? Like, has anything changed? Like, why would Chris be talking about it like it changed when like eh, it didn't really? Okay, so I do have a response to that. Perfect. Even when you put bodies on top of bodies, there is still space between them. The space might be very small, but there's still going to be a little bit of space that that spike has to go through where it is not in blood and like not being connected. So So a tiny bit is still going to leak out. I don't think but that's will, Brandon's answer. He is saying um, the term has been used to describe the loss of power in spikes outside, outside of bodies. bodies. And that's yeah. that's the thing that no longer happens. Yeah, I, I'm not I, talking about Brandon's answer. I'm talking about what David was thinking. About which, like, I don't think David... Sorry, David, for putting <laughs> words David. into your mouth. But like, I don't think like he's talking about like they're mitigating it by but doing it from body to body. But like, they know if like you put the spikes in blood, yeah, it won't drain. Yes. Like yes. that that's, was that's known. The, yeah, that's the argument that he made. That's correct. Uh, we see yeah, correct. we see the Inquisitors in Secret mm-hmm. History store spikes in blood. Well, that's true, but you still have to like have them for a time not in blood to get them in there. But like that applies now. Yes. I, I, right. I guess like yeah. how, how are they avoiding it completely? Right. Mm-hmm. I, I do want to read the passage from the Ars Arcanum. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I'm not going to read the whole section on spikes and compounding uh-huh. from the Lost Metal Ars Arcanum. But what Chris says is I can confirm as best as it can be attested that he, referring to Marsh, is fully capable of compounding to expand his life. He speaks of things of the past, like hemallergic decay and the toll that holding so many spikes takes upon the body. Inquisitors during his day slept for many hours. The words of founding say that uh, that this was due to the need for storing health, but Marsh indicates there may be more subtlety to it than is first understood. Um, I'd postulate that it was in part a side effect of the incredible burden placed upon the souls of the nature, by the nature of their horrific, horrific transformations. So what Chris is saying here is, he speaks of the things of the past, like hemallergic decay and the toll that holding so many spikes takes upon the body. This toll that she is referring to in the same breath as the hemallergic decay is just not a thing in the Cosmere anymore. Mm -hmm. You cannot shove this many spikes into a body. Mm -hmm. Harmony doesn't allow that. And so one of the two examples that she gives is... This just doesn't happen anymore. It's not that people can get around it. It's just it doesn't happen anymore. The mechanic no longer exists. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the things that I believe David used as 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 an argument against this was like, well, she's giving these two examples and one of them falls in this category. Why does the other one fall in the other category? Mm hmm. Although that's when they're treated in the same breath. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I still see that as being a fine sentence and then they don't necessarily have to be exactly the same. But I know that other people don't think that. And like, that is also fine. Uh, Like, I don't need to convince people of what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. No, that, and, that's yeah, not I, how you win conversations. <laughs> you don't have to win a conversation. <laughs> no, you have to. Okay. Also, okay. David, if you are watching, I hope this was uh, 
brought up okay i wanted to make sure that your arguments were like put forward as well and it wasn't one-sided oh don't worry i disagreed no. with david on the podcast so uh, the later <laughs> one uh yeah i didn't get uh, i wasn't able to be on it in the end yeah given given that we have talked about this before yeah um, let's let's build we'll people to you. the other episode yeah well yeah we will and, speak and, about it in the future in the future yeah. or sometime i've said my piece i'm done perfect <laughs> Yeah. This, this next one's from Veronica, who asked, oh, and this this, this one question. is a Jess question uh, <laughs> that Jess suggested. We know Vasher has visited Rashar, and we know that the Voren people soul cast important people's bodies into stone after they die, like what happened to Gavilar. Was Vasher aware of this when he visited, and is that the inspiration for the De Denier statues? Brandon, you know he would be aware of that. I wasn't consciously making that connection, though, in the books, I'll be honest with you. This is just going back to origins of what you can do with the magics in the Cosmere. I think he would definitely be aware that they did that. You can have a retro canon if you want, but it's not what I was thinking. But it seems like the sort of thing that would be very reasonable. I'll take a retro cannon, thanks. <laughs> I'll take one retro cannon, bartender. <laughs> retro cannon for 200. Mm -hmm. like it, this is neat it's like yep neat. yeah just like a, a neat parallel it's like oh yeah mm -hmm. cool that probably was probably was a thing it was in the that is cooler than what I, I, I was actually thinking so like yeah good job cool yeah we'll, we'll take that okay. retro cannon cool i think i came up with that question on a shodcast episode as well i think you i don't did, know which one i but... don't remember either well Listeners, rewatch our 200 plus episodes and tell us which one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That tell the 200 room. of these suckers. Yeah. Okay. Next is a question asked by Arjun. Does anyone it's know who? Hi, hi, it's me. Veronica asked um, this one. This was a Veronica question, I think. Yeah. Like she, she suggested this question. Okay. Yes. Um, I want to ask you about my favorite character, Kelsier. Garbage character. Nah. That's an any addendum to this, <laughs> but uh, which is a controversial opinion, but I hold to it. <laughs> That's a <laughs> Getty's opinion. Um, fight yeah. me. In Secret History, when he steals that orb from the Irie, is that orb full of purified door? Is that the first time we see that? Brandon, this is the first time we see that. So not connection juice, apparently. It is apparently not connection juice. That's so weird. Like, like it makes sense that it would be purified door, but I just don't understand the mechanics of how that's used to connect Kelsey to preservation, right? Like that's there's the thing probably I'm like more going on there. Uh, like, probably. So here is the answer I have arrived at. Okay. I don't understand how the IRE were planning to use this. That is that is still a little vague to me, but if I recall correctly, and granted I haven't reread that passage from Secret History, yeah, neither. But if I recall correctly, what happens is, Kelsier like does the Steve Austin, like he he smashes the orb and like uh, splatters the purified door over himself, and then he sees like all of these steel lines essentially which we now understand to be connection uh, but he sees all of the steel lines connecting him to everything and he pulls on all of that and that essentially pulls the shard to him and i think that plays with the whole idea of well you can use purified door to like overcharge a magical effect and what Kelsier is doing there essentially is he's doing an iron pull he is pulling but not on metal he's pulling on the shard because now he has the power to do that hmm. he's not connected enough to the shard to like be a permanent vessel for that but at this moment he's able to do that I have two questions coming out of that shoot do you think he could do the opposite and push on the shard and disconnect himself from it? <laughs> I think he can just drop it. The like, connection? Like, he, he could just drop the connection to preservation? I, no, I think a vessel can just drop their shard. 
I don't know what effects that's going to have on a vessel themselves, but yeah. I think a vessel can just say, I'm no longer yeah. a shard. I feel I, like I'm, shards can abdicate. Like, that feels reasonable. Sorry, I don't think I've come across correctly. <laughs> Even if Kelsia drops the shard, he's still connected to preservation mm-hmm. because of him being a Scadrian, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I In don't. In the same way, like, could you take a, a metal mind and, like, store your connection and no longer be connected to a place? I think. No, I don't think you can, like, sever connection. Like, yeah. That's like a. It's like. You can, like, sever, like, a meaningful connection like mm. like you can make it so like you can no longer like utilize that but that's still going to be like in co- hard encoded into your spirit web okay like that's like because that's the nature of the spiritual realm like it yeah records all of that yeah yeah i i think in okay. my head it is the difference between let's say i am i am like tied to i guess not a bunch of people but like let's say i'm tied with a rope to a bunch of people I can I can pull on that rope and like get these people close to me, uh, which is kind of what Kelsier is doing, or I can push on these people, um, which the rope metaphor is not great for, but like, you know, I can shove them away. And that doesn't necessarily sever the rope. It, it doesn't just, snap the rope. Yeah, it yeah. pushes them further away, which I don't know what that means in the, like the spiritual shardic sense. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't necessarily sever the rope. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily okay. sever the connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The other question I had was do you think you could do this, like drop the orb and seal the connections? And if, say, autonomy was also there at that time, but Kelsey is not connected to autonomy. Do you think that using the connection orb and the um, purified door, he could then like pull on autonomy and connect himself to another shard? I think that's what the Irie were planning on doing. So like there's some sort of mechanism for that. Yes. I think you would need a magic a magical effect that allows you to create connections. Mm-hmm. You, you would well, need... That's the question. Can this orb create connections? I think you can accomplish almost anything with pure investiture. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. May, maybe what the Irie were going to do is they need a huge chunk of door. They had a specific Aeon that they were going to do to make this effect to forge the connection, maybe. Like yes. Aeon door can do like anything, right? So maybe mm-hmm. Kelsier couldn't with his mm-hmm. magic, but yeah. like someone could, and a Lantrian can just do whatever, especially with the power yeah. source. I, I think like in a... just oh, here. I think in my head it was more like, oh, let's say there's an Aeon for forming connection. Uh, very mm-hmm. similar to like Dalinar's touch somebody yeah, in sure. their language, right? Let's say such an Aeon exists. It's possible that the Iris plan was, oh, preservation dies. We do this Aeon and then we juice it up with, uh, with Purified Door. And that forms a strong enough connection between, you know, either all of us or like Illinois um that the shard instead of dropping on the ground kind of goes to the next of kin uh but it's not next of kin it's next of strongest connection mm-hmm. something like that but i like something like that i like the idea of it's like oh wait they the orb doesn't need to be something different they're just launching they can just it doesn't they, they've just they just plan but and create an AI to do this the reason why i think it has to be purified is that like if they try to do that with just like the door mm. like there's enough like well that's already claimed by two shards yeah, sure like, sure it's not gonna yeah. like another shard is not gonna want to play with that nicely yeah so, i can like, see that purified like kind of like removes that like it's pure investitures like so it's yeah, like it, sure. like, it meshes nicely sure, sure i like that and not only is it pure but it's also a tremendous amount of power right yeah mm-hmm. 
Um, and like so there's like, this overarching thing in the Cosmere where like you need to be connected to the shard on a planet to use the magic system. And if this is able to potentially connect you to a different shard, then you can gain access to that magic system. Oh, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Definitely reminds me of like wobs of like, can Shy turn into a, a Mistborn or something? And it's mm -hmm. like, well, I mean, with enough power, like, I mean, maybe. A actually, kind of actually, that exact wob is mm -hmm. exactly the first time we heard about uh, pure, uh, yeah. pure unkey door, something like pure that. Pure unkey door. Yeah. 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 yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, presumably that's possible. Mm hmm. That's kind of neat. Um, I do wonder mm -hmm. if we, if, um, like other forms of the vestiture can also be turned into like a purified version, like whether um, Stormlight could be taken and also be turned into something purified. Like, I think it could I, be. I don't see why it's not. I'm confident you can. Yeah. Yeah. The, I don't know how, but like theoretically. Yeah. yeah like the Elantrians have just kind of figured it out first from yeah. sounds of it. Presumably. Uh, so, listeners, we are bad at time. No, we knew this and was going to happen. But I we knew this was going to happen. <laughs> We knew that we were going to be bad at time. So uh, we're going to do a couple more questions and then we'll leave the rest for, for later. Yeah. Uh, and one of those couple of questions comes from uh, Matt, a.k.a. Comatose on the forums, a.k.a. Rashendi Trash. Yeah. Brutal DM. Uh, who asks... Brutal DM. Um, <laughs> who asks, uh, can we confirm that Zysis is foil? And... Do all dragons have a nickname? So, Zysis Refliel, Zysis. Oh, no, uh, it's Zysis Refliel or Foil. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. Um, and and uh, Brandon says, yes, all dragons have a nickname. It's very common. And you are allowed to confirm that. Thank God. This is, this is so annoying <laughs> that there were two separate ones. So I'm glad we got to confirm that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so. I yep. would like to know cultivations. Absolutely. Like, so pre presumably, yeah. presumably, her full name is Coravelium of Ast. Sure. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah. I like. I don't think Coravari is her nickname. I think Coravari mm -hmm. is just what the Alethi call her. I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or not the Alethi, but like whatever, like yeah. ancient mythology. Sure. Yeah. And so, like, Frost presumably is his nickname. Yeah. 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 And he has, like, a draconic name. Yeah. yeah. As well. Fro Fro Frosty the Frosty Snowman. Yes. Yes. And that's always what I thought with Foil. It's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. that's like a really concise name, like Frost. Yeah. So, yeah, that's exactly what I thought. So, anyway, great. And it might be specifically because draconic names can be very long. It's easier to kind of give them a nickname when you're writing a book and you're like, okay, let's just give them an easier name to remember. Yeah. <laughs> like Ketson names. It is. No, it is. Oh, it yeah. is very interesting that uh, I think the only nicknames that we know are Foyo and Frost, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which are kind of. So Foyo is an essence on Roshar. Mm. And, and Frost is it, Frost is not an essence, but it's kind of an element. Yeah, sure. And so it's interesting whether, you know, other dragons might have similar nicknames, like whether and we're we'll going to end up pattern. Continue. Yeah, whether. Yeah, we're going to no. see dragons take on like primordial element names. Yeah. Yeah. Call me fire. Call me shadow. Call me. Yeah. yeah. Magnetism. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Ma ma mag. Just mag. Mag, yeah, for sure. Maggie, Maggie, that's Maggie. That's, Maggie. that's, yeah, that's sure. a human. Yeah. That's a human <laughs> child. Her name is Maggie. And that's what it comes into. <laughs> Super suspicious of any Maggies that show up in Era Three. We're, we're bringing it together. <laughs> I do wonder if the nicknames going off, um, like primordial essences and things like that that you're talking about, Argent, whether it comes from some ability that they have. And it's meant to like yeah, sure. match something. Yeah, maybe. I do I'd wonder that. I kind of like, I mean, Frost and Foil are just 
words that sound cool. <laughs> it's the boring answer. Oh, that's your like, take. Okay. <laughs> but like blaze or like there's like there's the words that like always show up at fantasy yeah. idols. Uh, yeah. How like, many shadows are do we know out there? Shadows. Yeah. I was like, yeah. They're just words that are cool. Like, why wouldn't you want that to be your nickname? Call me Blade. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tremble, right. mortals, and despair before the face of Zeisus Refliel. Oh, like foil? <laughs> <laughs> like foil, that guy? I know I him. Am. I know that guy. <laughs> yeah. Work from at uni, you know? Silverlight. <laughs> Cool. That's good. Let's do this last one. Last one. Last one. It's the last. Matt asked. Matt asked for personal reasons. Yes. Uh, <laughs> deeply, deeply personal. Deeply personal reasons. Can we finally confirm what type of spren is used to create half shards? Is it radiant spren, shard plate spren, or something different? Brandon says Raffo. I'm not Ooh, answering. Brutal. This theoretically should be confirmed in the RPG. We should be giving you all the tools that you need for these sorts of things, including all of the armor spren, all of the different brands of fused and things like that. The stuff we need so that you can role play. Matt says the people who are making them. Brennan. Yeah, that should all get confirmed in that. So for, for context, <sighs> if you have not watched our incredible no, half shot, it. <laughs> it's <laughs> bad. It was so fun. Matt and I argue so much. It's, it is. It's one of the shorter Shardcast episodes. I think we recorded Fabrials and then we had like, we split it and Half Shards was the <laughs> second one. And it's like an hour of just bickering over and over about the same thing. I actually love that episode. I think it's good. Um, where there's a line where Teravangian talks about how like, like he has a Half Shard and... It's a spread that could have blessed a. Yeah, yeah, radiant. he says that. And so like, it's like, is it a rate? Are half shards made of radiant spren? Like, what? what is. Radiant spren, plate spren. What? What does it mean to. Well, we bless? didn't know plate spren were a thing at that yeah. point. Mm, so. Yeah, but, but at the time, there was the theory that sure. plate is made of radiant like spren. cousin spren. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, are they radiant spren or not? Was the question of that episode. Mm -hmm. And so. Mm -hmm. uh i definitely wanted matt to ask this question i can't believe brandon raffo did are you kidding me and why is it coming out in the rpg like he was so forthcoming during that whole interview and this one he's like no i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you about dragon palaces and tamil but, but <laughs> half shards, half shards? Unacceptable. No. have they come up no. in like two books no uh, <laughs> will they come where, up ever again I don't where know. are the grand balls brandon no where one has used balls? the grand ball since the way of king or well i guess oh did they uh, use some of those radiance the grand balls grand bow. bows Okay. They're, they're a type um, of half shard. No, right? yeah. separate, separate from Ellen's magnificent balls. That's yeah, I was like, the, that's the wrong. I was series, like, what's man? a grand ball? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this language. Yeah, okay. yeah. But I, I just as pres yeah, as frustrating as it is, I can kind of see why Brandon referred it. If like mm -hmm. it's going to be the RPG, there's probably like, um confidentiality stuff that like, I mean, put out at the moment i uh, but it's but it's brandon's knowledge to give out either way yeah brandon's like mm -hmm. the president he can declassify whatever he wants yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> brandon could have answered this if he wanted to yeah. yes yes I, and mm -hmm. I know Matt was like maybe I should have read out Teravangian's quote just so just so Brandon knew it's like is it is it a radius friend though so I'm like what is going on here Brandon? what is going on there but uh yeah he raffled that so that's, sorry that's, Matt sorry Matt Matt he, he tried was, he tried yeah um that's quality episode though I I like the episode where we go around in circles and bicker it's very funny I would I would say I that was that was not a good episode but it was a fun episode mm. okay yeah that's I, a fair point I'm so mad like I was so <laughs> frustrated in that episode not your normal shard cast not your everyday shard cast yeah. go, go watch oh, half shards go watch the white sand episodes that's that's your job and then comment this. in the shard cast channel 
panel reaction on the Discord. Hey, what was the vibe you got from this episode? Was that fun for you to watch? Yeah, yeah. Or, or put it in the YouTube comments. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's yeah. quality. I want to see some comments on that half shot episode because I'm not going to read the comments. On oh, the I'll, video. oh, don't worry. I'll I'll screen cap the YouTube comments and send them to you. Okay. <laughs> um, cool. So. Yeah, turns out normally on WAB episodes, we can get through 10 pages of WABs, but uh, turns out all of our questions were really good because we carefully crafted them to be really good and Brandon's answers were interesting. So there's not really WABs we can just blaze fast because they're good questions. So because they're good. Yeah, questions. All, so all take that as the lesson, entire fandom, ask better questions. <laughs> ask better questions. Well, it's, it's more that we have lots of thoughts about them because, you know, we... Our our questions were thick with lore. Well, I mean, we spent look. a long time crafting questions that we wanted to talk about the yeah. answers on, yeah. and yeah, then we yeah, got yeah, the yeah. answers so that we could talk about them for a long time. Yeah, so out of turns out we talked about them. Out of sixteen pages, we got to eleven pages. So nice. What percentage of this episode is about dragons and oh, all the surprise it's, it's stuff about dragons? Sure. This is the we stuff have. we didn't plan to get about stuff about oh so. yeah 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 we, yeah, we, didn't, oh, yeah. Ask, we didn't ask about dragon no we didn't ask about no. dragons or dragon lore dragon stuff i hope you enjoyed so. that theory about dragon lift uh, it's very good it's like partialon i don't know if you remember that before uh, well at least i'm like i'm with i'm with jesse now i think like cultivation being the dragon mom makes less sense or no sense now because it's like yeah. you, you have a culture you'd tell that your daughter that she was a dragon. Yeah, anyway, I, I want uh, a young little dragon named Maggie. <laughs> Who doesn't know she's a dragon. Doesn't know she's a dragon. Who has magnetic powers. That's, that's how we bring the Dresden crossover from the previous episode. Ooh, true, true. Go back to four weeks ago when that episode aired. All right, we, 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 we got food to eat, so we got to go to who's that Cosmere character before we die. This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for who's that Cosmere character. Ta. Is it Maggie? <laughs> <laughs> Maggie. <laughs> All right, welcome to Zach Cosmic Character, the game show where you send five clues and a character to WTCC at 17shard.com. I read each clue aloud, and these guys have a chance to guess who's Zach Cosmic Character. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to do just two today because, you know, we've been recording a while, and this oh, one I is not a priority one, but is sent by who was a future patron uh, is Jester Lavore. This is from about a year ago. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're getting to your question. Um, Oof. All right. So clue one. This character acquires a magical item during the story. Zeth. Not shy. Zeth. It's not shy. You know, it really <laughs> narrows it down. Of course, this clue. <laughs> I know. There's so many magical, magical items. One. Has anyone guessed yet? Two people have guessed. I keep count on my hand. Okay. I, I did not hear finger. what they guessed. I'm writing down the guesses. So. Um, I guessed Zeth. Yeah, Zeth and Shy. And uh, Shannon guessed Shy. Yeah. Okay. Shinen. Mm, um, that's my guess Irish. is Risen. Not Risen. Is that an you item? definitely guess a magical <laughs> item. Is the Dawn Shard an item? What is an item? I, <laughs> I yeah, just get some fabric. She gets a floating shirt that's magical object. Stories. That's true. She does get a fabric that's a is, magical. Is there. investiture an item? Uh, like, does oh, is a radiant getting a shard blade is that an item? Like, I, I would I say no. Corpses are think, items. I think that's Dance what. Seems I think that's what the question. I think that's what the question is leading us. Shard blades are blades, which we would call an object. I, yeah. That's a fact. Uh, well, you know, they can take it up spread. with me. <laughs> which they're not going to do because they're fictional. That's right. No, uh, that's fake news. <laughs> oh, okay. Kelsier. It's not Kelsier. All right. <sighs> Collection juice. Clue two. <laughs> Clue two. This character can speak three or more languages. Three 
plus language. KIs. Oh. Not KIs. Does connection answer. count, though? I don't think I it think, does. Uh, hmm. uh, I would it, say as a judge, uh, I'm going to rule that speaking via connection hacks is not learning the language and knowing how to speak it. Yep. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. And I agree with uh, Chaos, who we talked about this with Shai, actually. It's like, ah, Wait, can I, can I, can I retract my guess? Because no. this, because <laughs> this was sent a year ago, as as said by the judge, and a year ago the lost medal was not out. No, that's a you problem. That's you should have remembered that. You should have remembered that. <laughs> I I give way more than Grace does as it is. Tough crap. Well, yeah, I I would have tried that on Grace. <laughs> Hoid. It's not Hoid. Hoid. Love that. Is it? Sigzil. It is not Sigzil. Good guess. I like it. Who speaks languages? Who speaks yes, languages? Like who actually knows different languages? Who knows language? Who who words? Well, uh, Sigzil all... does, but that guess didn't get no, me anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it just you, Ian? Oh, yep. oh, what's your name? What's your name? If you a unique description will be sufficient, Ian. Rock's daughter, Cord. who's a character in Cord. Don Cord. Cord. It is Cord. Yay! Wow. Hey. Nice. Very good. Well, yeah, nice. I was like, that's I they talk she about language. Shard plate. Mm -hmm. She gets plate. plate. Oh. Yeah. Um, clue three, this character has sailed before. Clue four, this character has multiple names. And clue five, this character appears in the novella. Wow, and the wow. three languages are Alethi, Vedan, and Horn Eater. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I, cool. I think probably... that comes up. Like the yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably would not have yeah, guessed that whole until, thing. until Clue 5, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because oh, okay. like, she, she has difficulty with like one language, and then, like, but she's fluent in another. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they switch. And she's like, oh, my God, finally, I can talk to someone I can. Yeah. Yes. Which which, by the way, is like I haven't felt this way in a long time, like probably fully a decade or so. But there's a piece in Don Shard uh, when uh, Huyo uh, is finally able to speak with uh, with someone. Right. And like the idea of, oh, I am in my own language. I am educated and and sophisticated and I know thing and I am like I am intelligent. I know how to how to do words well. And then like having to communicate with other people in a different language and you just don't like the ideas are there. You know the smart yeah. things, yeah. but they're so, like you know, yeah. you know the the how the you know it's just the la the language barrier is is just crippling your ability yeah. to communicate yeah and it's it's so frustrating yeah and it's like yeah i don't i don't know the word cowboy i know a horse pirate yeah <laughs> i love that okay oh, do man. you guys want to know a fun fact Okay. Oh, so yes. you know how yes. Alethi and Vedan are technically two different languages, but are very yeah. similar. Yeah. Cabranthian is a third language that yeah. is very similar to the two, but is still technically a separate language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. Go figure. This next one is a. It, it's actually funny because one was another Jester Lavore question, so that that actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I tried Jester. I tried. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, so. This next one is from one of our heralds on Patreon, Harrison. You can submit your Who's That Cosmic Character priority cues uh, over there and we'll read them faster. Yeah. yeah probably. Not sooner, faster. We'll just read the question faster. <laughs> yes, <that's> not, no. <laughs> All right. Clue one. This character is dead. 
testament. It's not testament. <laughs> <laughs> is she are they dead? What does it mean to be dead? Um, I would say yeah. testament is dead. I, I yes. would say she, she's yeah. dead. I would argue. I think colloquially people would say that. And spread would say that. It's in the name. I mean they call them dead shot blades. Yeah. So they, they call them dead eyes. Not is dead. dead. <sighs> Is dead. She's walking around doing things. That's very not dead. Is dead. Death means something different for Sprint. That's right. Oh, death okay. has. That's a very human centric. A position. flexible True. definition in the Cosmere. True. A flexible. It's a pure investiture. You can't use your fleshy biases here. <laughs> and the only you bias. Is, is, is it Kelsier? It's not Kelsier. Okay. Not dead. I might be saying the wrong name, so I'm going to give the name and a description. Sure. Oh, the other horse? No. Fenderana? Tefspren. Yep. It's not yes. Fenderana. That's Fenderana. Okay. But that is Tefspren. That is Tefspren. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yep. You were correct, just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you described... It, you failed successfully. Thing. Failed successfully. Yay. All right. One uh, more. I'll, I'll, I'll join you and, and just guess Teft. <laughs> it's not dead. Oof. Clue two. This character is a criminal. Dead. Tin. It is tin. Oh. <laughs> Again? <laughs> uh, I, I, I felt this. I, I felt maybe people wouldn't guess Tin again because it's like, oh, man, there's no way it could be Tin again. Um, uh, I was the I've only been one on too many of these. I don't trust time. True. I voted for the other one. That's true. Uh -huh. You did. Uh, clue three was this character has indirectly done work for Kelsier. Clue four, this character was deceived by a main character. And clue mm. five, this character's name is reminiscent of a metal. <laughs> okay. That all right. All right. Accurate. Ac yeah, that <laughs> I'm fine with. You liked that tin one better than the other one? I mean, I don't like it. I'm just like, accept that as a valid clue. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> all right, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed that. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this. Words are hard. I don't know. Find us on 70 char.com for all your news, discussion, theories and fun that you could ever want. Join us on Discord. Links in the description. You can support us on Patreon for as little as a dollar every month. You can find us on the socials, uh, the social meds, uh, the Facebook, Twitter, X. SoundCloud, uh, Instagram, too. We post stuff <laughs> on Instagram sometime and stuff. And uh yeah, we will see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Build a palace for your teen dragons. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they'll know there is a dragon of Getty. That's just not the same. <laughs> Build a human palace for okay. your teen dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Gavinor is a dragon. Think about that. Gavin. God. Little baby Gav. Acedon was a dragon. That's that's the weird thing about Acedon that we don't know. She's a dragon. Yeah, like we don't know she's not a dragon. True. It's correct. True. It's true. Yeah. She could be. Yeah. yeah. That's why Yasna was looking into her. Kaladin, who is you know son of Tanavast, son child of honor, might be child of Tanavast and Coravellium of Ast. Who is a dr so you know? Cal Cal might be do dragons do dragons breed yeah. true? Is that the is let's Cal let's put that like the title the title of this episode? Do dragons breed true? Vertical slash shardcast twenty twenty three. We don't put the ears in the titles. I don't know. Just put us out of our misery, Eric. <laughs> oh, we will just keep. Bye. 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 Bye.